I'm looking at page 14 for part two of this lesson. In this part of the lesson, we're looking at a new phase. In the new phase, we're trying to talk about something called f prime x, completely different than before when we looked at f prime at a. See, this gives us three things that we talked about several times. It gives us the derivative at a particular point x equals a. It gives us the slope of a tangent to the graph of f at a particular value x equals a. It gives us the instantaneous rate of change at x equals a. It gives us a value. This here, f prime of x, does not give us a value. It gives us an important thing called a function. This is a function. This is a value. Two different things. This function will help us to find all those things we talked about before for any value of x. But please note that this here is a function, and this here is a value. And there's a bunch of definitions on the page that talk about it. Let's get right into the example. This is more similar to probably something that you've done in a previous course. So f of x equals 2x squared plus 1. The, the question wants us to find f prime of x and to interpret it. So it wants us to find a special function. And we're going to use the definition of a derivative. Notice I'm saying definition of a derivative. And I'm not saying the definition of a derivative at x equals a. So we're going to use the limit as h goes to 0. Please also note there is no alternative definition for f prime of x where there was an alternative definition to f prime a. So here we go. Limit of f of x plus h. That's the first time I'm using f of x plus h. Minus f of x all over h. This is what we're trying to find. So the algebra is the same. I'll move quickly. The limit is h goes to 0. So we have 2x plus h quantity squared plus 1 minus f of x, which is 2x squared plus 1, all over h, which equals the following. Notice that I distributed this to both terms. I don't want to make that mistake. And we also see here that 2x squared cancels out with 2x squared. 1 cancels out with 1, which is nice because now we have the limit as h goes to 0. I can factor out an h, 4x plus 2h all over h. The h is canceled. The limit as h goes to 0, 4x plus 2h. And that, of course, goes to 4 x as the final answer. So we say that f prime of x equals 4x. The interpretation, the slope of the tangent to f of x at any x value is the function f prime of x equals 4x. Okay, number two from the f prime of x. So the first function here, oh, this is g of x, and what we want to do here is graph another function. We're going to graph g prime of x. We're going to graph that special function that gives the slope of this g of x curve. So uh, what I like to do is say, what is the slope at negative 3? And you come over and say, oh, rise over run. At negative 3, the slope is 1. And at negative 2.5, well, the slope is 1. And keep going, negative 3.999, the slope is 1. So we say that the slope everywhere between negative 4 and negative 2, the slope is always 1. And I'm careful to leave a little space here for uh, something I'm going to add to this. Next we ask, what is the slope at negative 1? And the slope here at negative 1 would be, let's see, down 1, 2, over 1, so negative 2. And so the slope is going to be negative 2 on the interval negative 2 to 0. So that's going to look like this. All right. And then it jumps up again at this point here. It's going to change the slope to be now 1, 2, 3 over 1. And so between 0 and 1, the slope jumps up to 3. 
and then from 1 to 4, the slope is down 1, 2, 1, 1, negative 1. So then it's going to look like this. But we have to ask ourselves, what is the slope at negative 2? Right here, what is the slope? And there is no slope, there is no derivative, because there is a corner. And that gets expressed by these open circles here. And the same is going to be true here. We have a corner, so our function, derivative function, does not exist at that point. And then finally, at 1, there's another corner, so we have open circle, open circle. Uh, important to say, though, what is happening here? Does it have a derivative at that point? And when we talked about one-sided derivatives uh, and endpoints, it's an endpoint, and the respective one-sided derivative is approaching 1 or even equal to 1. So it exists, which means we have an open circle at that endpoint. And similar reasons, this endpoint is going to be closed because the respective one-sided derivative also exists. And so this is our final graph. In number three, uh, we're doing the opposite process. I'm giving you a function, so I'm going to give you the derivative function. And I'm going to ask that you graph the original function. And there are a ton of pieces here that are important. The directions say, sketch a possible graph of a continuous function on this domain. It's a continuous function, which means it will be continuous at every point on its domain. And that's important information. We know that f of negative 1 equals negative 2. That's a part of f. But then the function f prime of x is described as an equation, not as a graph. And we've got to take the slope information to graph the original function from which this slope was, was made. So a good starting point would be um, a point they give us, which is f of negative 1 equals negative 2. So we've got this point. We know that exists. Um, now, there's telling me something's happening to the left of negative 1. I know the slope is going to be negative 1. So I'm going to come in at a slope of negative 1. And I'll stop here because of my domain. So you see from negative 3 to negative 1, the slope is uh, negative 1. And then the slope is 0, which is then going to be a horizontal line between negative 1 and 2. Now, just for a moment, I'm going to keep this open because I don't see any equals here. And then when I'm greater than 2, the slope is going to be 3. So up 1, 2, 3 over 1, again with the domain. And this would be correct if it were not for this continuous on domain. So I have to fill in this circle here. So these corners will make the derivative fail to exist at certain points, but the original function is defined there, and this is our final graph of f of x. In our grand finale here, we're going to look at the deeper level thinking on page 16 of the notes. I'm going to lecture on the first one, which is harder than the ones I will be asking you to do for the homework, but it's going to give you some ideas and strategies of how to approach this. First off, part A. The question wants us to find f of 0. Now there's a really clever way to do this, which I will show you at the end of the video, but I want to show you some possibilities. We can say f of 0 is equal to f of 0 plus 0. We know that's a true statement. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have a property for f of x plus y or value plus value. So according to this, property number one, I have f of 0 plus f of 0 over 1 minus f of 0 times f of 0. That will give me 2f of 0 over 1 minus f squared a zero. Now if I cross multiply f of zero here and distribute, I have f of zero minus f cubed of zero equals two times f of zero. And the idea is we're going to solve for f of zero. The temptation may be to divide everything by f of zero 
but you might see that's what we're trying to prove is that f of 0 equals 0. So that would be somewhat of an illegal move. Not somewhat, it is an illegal move. So we have to solve for f of 0 without doing that. We need to bring this over via subtraction. So we have negative f of 0 minus f cubed of 0 equals 0. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative and factor out at f of 0. And then by the zero product property, f of 0 equals 0 or 1 plus f squared of 0 equals 0. And you can see that this is illegal. This is impossible. Uh, for we would have f squared of 0 equals negative 1, and that's not positive, possible, which makes us conclude that this has to equal 0. So therefore, f of 0 equals 0. And let me make that look more like a 0. Now let's take a look at part b, where it wants us to prove that f prime of x equals 1 plus f of x squared. That's what we're asked to prove using the definition of a derivative, not the definition of a derivative at x equals a, but the definition of a derivative. So we'll start off by saying f prime of x equals, using our definition, the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Then I'm going to use property 1 from above. It's helpful to have your notes in front of you. Property number 1 from above is going to have us rewrite this expression as f of x plus f of h over 1 minus f of x f of h. And then we have f of x, all of that over h. Okay, in the next step, we're going to say the limit as h goes to 0. Well, this grand numerator, within this grand numerator, I want a common denominator. And it looks like this will be the common denominator of the grand numerator. So 1 minus f of x, f of h. So I would need to take this one and multiply it top and bottom by that expression, which would give us f of x plus f of h okay, minus f of x times 1 minus f of x times f of h. Let's extend this. So I'm still missing this h piece here. But instead of writing it all over h, I'll multiply reciprocal, and then that h will make its way down here. So next I want to just do some simplification. Let's see, um, I'm going to have f of x plus f of h minus f of x, and this will distribute, plus f squared x f of h, and that is all over h times. There we have it. Okay, uh, hopefully you can see something here that the f of x's cross out. And you might also be able to see, we can do this in one step here, that we can factor out of the numerator an f of h. So f of h gets factored out in the numerator. Uh, 1 plus f squared x, like that, all over h times 1 minus. So now we want to say the limit of a product is product of limits. So the limit as h goes to 0 f of h over h times the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 plus f squared x like that over 1 minus 
f of x, f of h, like that. Then, let's see if I can scoot down here a little bit. Then by property number three, this quantity here is equal to one. So I'll write it so that I can clearly see the property being used like that. One minus f of x, f of h. And then in our final property, we know the limit as h goes to zero of f of h is equal to zero, which is gonna lead us to one plus f squared x over one, which equals one plus f of x squared, which is what we wanted to prove. Oopsie. Uh, sorry, which is what we wanted to prove in the very beginning. Q E.